Some audience members have issues with the show's diversity and LGBTQ themes, and those should be dismissed. However, viewers should genuinely examine the legitimate criticisms the acolyte has received. Cultural critics like the critical drinker and nerd Roddick have dubbed the show lore-breaking for its recent revelations, but their commentary isn't productive. Rather, it encourages bigotry and hatred over a show that's just getting started. Watch out! Run! Oh. <laughs> I can't wait to see what people are gonna. <laughs> if you if you love Star Wars and you want to see it thrive, Star Wars is about hope, and it's made for kids, kids who just like you and just like me watched Star Wars at some point when we were little itty bitty things when we were Padawan age and turned on Star Wars, our jaws dropped and our eyes popped out of our skull and we fell in love with this galaxy far, far away. Maybe there's a kid out there who's doing, actually I'm, I'm certain there's a kid out there who's falling in love in Star Wars that exact same way because of the Acolyte. Disney Star Wars, the Acolyte a show that many would say predictably so, has now become the most conversation setting. Well, maybe I shouldn't say conversations, more like nonsensical debates where both arguing sides left their hearing aids at home. But in that same breath, The Acolyte has easily become the most controversial Star Wars project to be received by fans since the studio's second movie in their sequel trilogy, The Last Jedi. In a way, even immortalizing itself now with the show claiming the title of the lowest rated Star Wars project in the franchise, and while I personally do not think that this show is deserving of that award, I mean, it is going to be a long time for me before Star Wars writes, directs, and releases to the public a more incompetent scene than Obi-Wan hiding Leia underneath his fucking jacket like a Looney Tunes character. You cannot convince me that this scene was not written by Toontown blokes. And while it was relatively obvious that there was bound to be some criticism of the show going into it given the climate that we live in, and the quote-unquote culture wars Disney seems to be raising with anyone that has a beating pulse, a battle that Disney, Bob, and Kathleen seem to be willing to fall in combat for. Let's just be frank, it's not like the show itself really lends its supporters any favors, and yeah, it's their own fault, and people like Kathleen have paved their own path of dumbassery when it comes to this IP, so I don't have to reiterate all of the terrible choices that she has made for this brand. The problem is, is that you wouldn't think that would be the case for multi-million dollar fan fiction. This is a vision that has been floating around the empty heads of Lucasfilm for around five years in a show that has been in production for half of that time. And while I have reiterated in the majority of my Star Wars videos or reviews that the reason why the majority of Disney Star Wars productions have felt so half-assed and received so lukewarmly by its core audience is because of their execution on their projects, not the ideas themselves. The Acolyte, at least for me, and I would say for at least a minority group of the audience that is just trying to judge the show as a show, is starting to fall into a realm of the sunken place that are true show and movie killers. The Acolyte is just boring. In order to be more specific in what I mean, because while the feeling of boredom is completely subjective from audience member to audience member, my point is, is that we as an audience are now four episodes into an eight episode show where literally nothing of significance has happened yet, not in regards to character development or character growth of our protagonist, not when it comes to the progression of our narrative, the world still feels just as small as ever with instant transmission between planets off screen, and absolutely nothing, and I mean not a nibble of information when it comes to our villain. And when you actually take a step back and take a grander look at the show from an unbiased point of view, you'll begin to recognize the many flaws and reasons on how this can even be the case. Because unfortunately, no matter how you look at it, The Acolyte seems to be a show written by people that are in way over their heads when it comes to this IP. Crafting and creating a show riddled with terrible pacing issues, character introductions that go nowhere, character conveniences that replace the writing tactic of cause and effect, a world so small that it fails to even live up to the world building of Fallout, which I'm pretty sure is literally just a 30 mile span. And while this next point is not exclusively an Acolyte issue, or even a Disney Star Wars issue, but a Disney Plus issue as a whole, a show that is destroyed by its runtime. 
And don't get me wrong, like I said, we are only halfway through the show, so while some of my complaints could be and will more than likely be rectified by the end of the season, again in that same breath, the fact that nothing really show shattering has happened in that span is a real issue. And I guess it's just more if you're a half cup full or half cup empty kind of person. And that's just disregarding all of the lore breaking fan fiction aspects of the show. But the reason why I say the runtime is one of, if not the main reason for how apathetic I feel about this show, is because if these four episodes were say hypothetically two episodes, I don't think I would be having the issue of subpar pacing and what feels like emptiness on a screen. I mean, realistically, for those who haven't seen it yet, so I guess spoilers in a way, more has happened in episode one of the House of Dragon in regards to characters, character dynamics, narrative shifts, situation settings, and stake building than four episodes of this show. I've honestly never seen a marketing strategy such as Disney Plus's when it comes to how they must feel about how audiences ingest their media. Because it is a strategy that is mainly exclusive to their platform for episodes ranging in between 25 to 35 minute marks. I mean, when you think about it, that is literally your average Saturday morning cartoon. And I think that kind of ties into everything because while the MCU, Star Wars, or even a franchise like Doctor Who are franchises that you could argue from a Disney employee's POV that they are made and marketed towards kids. It's almost mandatory that a shorter runtime is needed for the TikTok brained new generation. But even just this year, when you look across the board, it shows like Fallout, House of the Dragon, The Boys, Shogun, and Invincible. And those are shows that I have seen. I couldn't imagine cutting half of that content because it was all necessary for the story to be a complete vision. But all that reasoning does is really just hammer home the fact that we as an audience have been asked to ingest unqualified, unorganized, half-assed, and unfortunately, an incomplete vision of a person that either lacks the creativity, imagination, or IQ to finish the job. In a way, what I'm saying is that there's kind of no way that Disney Plus shows could release with a runtime of what most shows would call the norm, because the people who are hired to do the job simply lack the talent to do so. It's a skill issue. When you disregard the nitpicks and track record of Disney Star Wars and just look at it as one sole show, characters such as Osha, Mei, Soul, Smile Lord, or even Soul's Padawan, a character where I do not even remember her name and couldn't even be bothered to look it up, could be interesting characters if written in a way that makes them seem relatable in any way, shape, or form. But because of the runtime, it's mostly just fast travel and quippy dialogue sequences in order to just move on to the next scene. Nothing of substance that you as an audience member can latch onto and connect with our characters. The closest that I feel like we have gotten to that was May in episode 4, shouting to whoever will listen that she'll side with Osha over Smiley Wren. But unfortunately, that is still inconsistent character writing when that is coming from a character that has already killed Jedi and set fire to that very sister's room in the previous episode. So from an audience's POV, you're just sitting there watching the screen in another lose-lose situation, wondering to yourself how the fuck did Star Wars get to a point where it just feels so empty. It all just circles back to the fact of my own personal mindset when it comes to all of Hollywood of execution over idea. As much of a great idea that you might have, if you give a half-assed effort, or even if the effort isn't half-assed, it's just simply that the end product isn't all that in a bag of chips, then what can you realistically expect from the audience to keep bird boxing themselves until their own mentality, standards, and expectations drop as low and become as toontown as their Hollywood supply? No, you wouldn't do that. That's dumb. And in my eyes, that is no way to go about your audience to studio relationship. And why I continue to reiterate that Disney Star Wars is by far the biggest brand in the deepest of sunken places, even when compared to other top dogs, such as the MCU or even DCU. And the fact that the Acolyte has become now the lowest rated Star Wars project of all time really signifies that. And no, I don't subscribe to the notion of review bombing. Yes, I know that there is review bombing out there, but I think there is also review praising. So therefore, if I can one, then I can't can the other. So that's just how it goes. While there have already been so many videos on this platform that were ready to call this show poop on a screen before it even aired, and many videos breaking down the little nitpicks here and there throughout its lifespan, the main umbrella problem that Disney has faced since the purchase of this brand is that again, we simply don't know what we're doing. 
We don't hire the qualified people to write scripts. We don't hire the qualified people to write engaging or unique characters. We don't hire the qualified enough people to entrust this brand to and to respect the groundwork that came before. We don't hire anyone that contributes to the cause or narrative that Star Wars or the people involved with Star Wars is a brand that cares about its audience. And when you don't care about your audience, and for a lack of better words, alienate and divide your audience for years on end. This is the cake that we as a studio to audience relationship is left with. And I don't really see how Disney expects to change without accountability. And honestly, I would say an entire change in foundation at this point. But with a show like The Acolyte, it gives off the impression that Disney Star Wars isn't really in the game of reshaping their image. It's more of a stand on business mentality. But when that mentality is leading to a decline in business, then when does it end? Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. And if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I'm going to leave my Twitter and letterbox in the description in case you guys want to go check that out. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.